Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. Today we're going to be unboxing quite a interesting printer and it's very large, or at least the box is, and it's called the Artillery Sidewinder X1. So this printer has very interesting features to offer and also has a large area to print on. So in this video we're going to unbox it, set it up, and do our first print. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so I got this printer from a company called Artillery, but I think they're changing their name because of the name Artillery, and maybe for a good reason, because if you see this tape here all around the top of the box, you can see that I think the customs or wherever it goes through has been opened and, you know, checked because of the name Artillery, at least. And obviously when you hear the name Artillery, you only think of one thing, so. In any case, guys, it came in and everything's good. The box is very large. This is probably the biggest box by far of any 3D printer that I've boxed. So you can kind of see here how big it is. It's kind of hard to show, but maybe with my hand on here you can kind of see a little better but it goes very long this way so all right so let's open this thing up i'm gonna use a spatula all right so let's see what it looks like all right well that's a little odd we're missing the flaps here on the side and maybe for a reason maybe they shipped it that way but in any case this is what it looks like and we have black foam so let's go ahead and pull off some of this foam here all right, so the first thing I see here is a read me first little paper here. So it kind of tells you, you know, read your manual and all the hazards that are involved with 3D printing. So here's an interesting paper. This is a checklist of the quality control of this printer. So somebody manually checked this while going through it, I guess, testing every part of it. Very interesting. So that's quite encouraging. And here it looks like we have a little manual and a Ziploc bag. And also a separate paper of how to hook up your slicer with slicer. Very interesting. The installation manual also unfolds. And it's quite a nice little manual here. So it kind of shows you what's included. And then step one, and then spool holder, connecting wires, sensors, plugging everything in. So it doesn't appear to be too involved. So more steps here to go through. So quite concise on the steps. And I'm seeing here that it says LED. So it has a light of some sort. All right, so let's see what we got here. All right, so here is the top piece. Let's see if we can just pull it up. Okay, it does come up quite easy. And you can see here, guys, it comes with dual motor on the Z axis with two rods. And not only that, there's a belt up here. All right, so I do see a pocket here. So it appears to be a baggie with stuff in it. Very interesting. Okay, so this is like some accessories and things like that. Basically everything you need to get this thing together. I'll put that to the side for now. So here it looks like we have the spool holder bracket. Very nice, and it actually has bearings. And here on the side of it, it looks like there's a filament detection guide. And it's one of those that moves around really easy with the filament. Is that it looks like they have a little PTFE tubing in there in the center. That way it doesn't get worn out. And we do have our US plug power cord. So here is the bottom part of the printer. So they definitely oversized the box a little bit for extra protection. All right, let's try to pull this guy out. So this is one whole piece here. All right, and that appears to be everything for the box. All right, so let's start with the base here. And as you can see, guys, this is quite a nice base. It's pretty low profile. And looks like completely encased here in this metal cover. Quite attractive looking for sure. And here on the bed we can see we have a sticker that says 110 volts. So I think what makes this bed a little different than most printers is that it uses AC to heat it. Which should be quite faster than normal. And this does appear to be some kind of glass here. So the first thing I notice is that the bed here actually is loose. So we're going to have to adjust that so it's just right. I'm going to go ahead and pull this plastic sheet off of the bed. 
All right, so we got the plastic off, and what I can see is the bed looks like it's glass, but it has some kind of coating on it. Well, we'll take a look at it a little closer in a minute. Now let's go ahead and uh, pull out whatever's in here. So it looks like they included a test cube that they've printed, I guess like a test sample at the factory before they shipped it. So I guess this is kind of the quality to expect out of this thing. So here it looks like we have ribbon cables. So this is connectors, I guess, to connect the printer. Very interesting. So they also include six wheels, these little plastic roller wheels that if you ruin yours, you can change them out. That's pretty nice. So here it looks like we have the bolts that we need to connect the top part to the frame here. So it looks like stickers of some sort. It's those like material ones. So I guess maybe to hold things down or cover things. There's a USB cable to connect the printer to a computer. A little piece of PTFE tube and a couple zip ties, just two. And here's the tools that we need to adjust the eccentric nuts on this bed. So there's a couple more things. And here we have an USB stick, which is one gig. So instead of using a micro SD card or an SD card, they're going this route, just using a USB. Pretty cool. That should be really easy to go from the computer to the printer. And so there's one more thing in here and it's quite tiny. And it looks to be like the LED that goes somewhere, I guess. Or maybe this is an extra one, I'm not sure. So somewhere on the printer, we can plug this in and we'll have lights. Very cool. All right, so first things first, let's adjust our bed so hopefully i can show you this guys but you can see right here so this is the if you're looking at the printer from the front this is the right side of it there are the centric nuts right there so there's three rollers on each side of the bed and to be honest it's quite challenging to get between with this tiny little wrench i feel like they should have included a longer one maybe or went ahead and adjusted this thing correctly at the factory because i don't really see a good way to get under there i think that kind of leaves us with one choice which is we're gonna take off the bed here and maybe that'll give us a chance to look at it a little better. So definitely quite a low profile to work with. All right, let's see here. Okie dokie, so that wasn't too difficult. So here you guys can see, hopefully, we have a pretty nice insulation here. And be careful with this aluminum there. It's quite sharp on the edges. I already cut myself a bit. So it's like this huge blanket underneath the bed that insulates it, very cool. And it looks like now we can get to our bracket here so i can't really move this around because i have the bed tied up to the back so now it's really easy to get to you can see but we have eccentric nuts right here so here's another odd thing so they only include one wrench and you know that's just for the eccentric nuts but there's no way to loosen this up here the nuts for the bolts thankfully we got a lot of printers so we can just grab another wrench here so yeah there's definitely no good way of doing this because you can't even go under the bolt there it's very close to the frame so I feel like this step is definitely overlooked by the manufacturer because they kind of adjusted this because this is quite a complicated adjustment here when you can't reach anything. So now we're just going to have to kind of go with, with the feel here. All right, so I finally got that adjusted. So it's definitely not something that, you know, a beginner could probably do. So, But, you know, if you take your time, you can do it. But these wheels are quite tricky to adjust already. And, you know, having no room whatsoever makes it even harder. But the trick that I do use, and I don't know if I can show you guys, but basically if you tug on this and you can spin the wheel with some resistance, but it still makes good contact, that's about where you want to be. And all the wheels have to be like that. So if you just tug on it just a little bit, they all have to do a little burnout. So if they're still making contact and you're able to move them in one spot, then you got it really close. So that's how I went by it. And it's seems to be perfect so all right so now that that's done let's go ahead and put this plate back on so looking at this thing a little bit closer i realized that there is no aluminum here so we just have glass and then the, there's a mat underneath there against this that's the ac mat for the heated part and then we have insulation under that this is definitely a different take and it does make it quite light also so that's a big plus for this thing all right so let's see if we can just put this thing back on and that's it and we do have really nice adjustable knobs there under the bed you definitely have quite limited space to work with underneath so all right so now that we got the bed back on and it feels really good let's head to the next step and so the next step is to install this gantry part which is the top piece of the printer to the frame here to the bottom so it should line up quite well here and there we go it kind of sits in there on its own so here you can see it kind of slots into this slot here just like that and we should be able to put a couple bolts underneath to hold it all right so it looks like we have some small little bolts and then we have the larger ones here 
and they do have a lock washer and there are five of them I'm not sure maybe an extra one right in any case let's grab two of them hopefully we can do this and we should be able to go through here okay there we go all right so that wasn't too bad and while we're under here guys we can see like there's some rubber feet here and a nice fan shroud right there looks like a large fan underneath there so we're not going to tighten this yet just going to snug it and then go to the other side same thing for this side should be able to start our bolts here they started quite easily so yeah tilting the printer like this on the side seems to be the easiest way to get to the stuff and we can go ahead and tighten this really good and then we'll go back to this side and tighten this one really good also all right and so now we got the two pieces connected so that was actually quite simple and not very hard to do and it feels quite solid overall so what we just did was step one so step two is putting the filament holder on so it's this bracket right here and you can see here there's a couple brackets in the back and those will be connected to the printer on the top so let's go ahead and go up all right so i'm going to flip this thing around hopefully you guys can see a little better but here we have some nuts inside the channel there and then we have actually a wire also and the wire is for the filament detector here okay so the sensor does go to the front like this and these are the four little bolts that hold the brackets on so i guess it would be as simple as grabbing a bolt here and starting it so and the cool part is is that you can move this you know anywhere in the channel so you can make it as wide as you want or as narrow as you want according to your spools all right so before i tighten that i'm going to grab a spool so this is the usual one kilogram spool here and once we're pretty happy with it we can go ahead and tighten these bolts here so let's go ahead and flip this thing back around a little bit so i don't know if you can see guys but here is the filament detection sensor so it would go something like this and then through the filament detector you know and then it will go down to the printer so there is a little plug that you need to plug in right here and that's the plug over here that comes out to the side but in any case there's a plug right here that you need to plug in in any case so i'm just going to leave all this up here since we're going to need it so let's go to our next step all right so for the next step they just kind of show you how to hook up the spool holder and the filament detector and then it looks like we need to do the z-axis switch here and it does look like they use some kind of i don't know how you would call them optical or whatever switches here not the mechanical ones which is kind of interesting so i'm not sure if those are better or not i guess we'll see and so that brings us to this corner over here so it looks like our z-axis switch here is on the right side of the printer not the left as usual so it does have a little t-nut there i guess it goes on the frame but it actually goes to the front side over here i think according to the manual so since we're back here let's go ahead and plug in the z motor wiring here and it goes in right there and on the left side here we also have a couple wires to plug in so there's actually a ribbon cable i don't know if you guys can see that but there's a ribbon cable that comes down from the gantry here to plug into so that might be a little bit tough it just goes right down into the plug down here all right well that wasn't too bad so it just plugged right in down here you can see right there and so here we have the z-axis motor and i'll go ahead and plug that in so make sure your wires are really really tidy here because the bed actually comes you know quite close to all this stuff and especially this ribbon cable here on the edge the bed is extremely close to it so make sure they're not rubbing on it or whatnot else and i have a feeling this is why they included this tape here so if you needed to use it you know like tape it up here really good or whatever to get the wirings you know away from the bed and there's another little plug here and that's it for this side all right so the switch here goes somewhere over here i know it's kind of hard to see guys they're using a lot of black for wiring and everything like that which looks really nice but it's a little hard to see where it's supposed to be but they say it needs to be 75 millimeters from the bottom so they didn't give us any kind of measuring tool here but what i'm going to do is first of all we're going to cut this zip ties here to cut this gantry loose and so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to lower it down till it almost touches the bed and make sure your springs on the bed are compressed and then i'm just going to go all the way up with this switch and i think that should do it but we'll have to see so hopefully that's close enough and we should be good right there so it looks like we have some kind of tape over here so that appears to be another ribbon cable that needs to plug in and where it plugs in is actually over here and by the way this thing is loose the belt is loose so it looks like they definitely don't adjust everything and all this is loose so I guess they want you to do all the adjustment on your own and the reason for that is because and this might be you know smart anyways because you can't adjust everything 
at the factory perfect all the time I guess and so this forces the user to adjust it you know and hopefully the user knows how to adjust it to get it right so 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 far just assembling this thing I can tell you that this is definitely not for beginners unless you're really technically inclined and kind of know what's going on already a little bit you know you obviously will figure it out but for anyone that's just starting out definitely not but in any case so the ribbon cables are pretty easy to plug but you just have to be really gentle with them make sure you don't force them in the wrong way and things like that so they plug in just fine and seem to hold themselves and I definitely like the clean look of the ribbon cable so there is another ribbon cable right here that needs to plug in right to here and that's as simple as pushing it in there and that's it all right and so for the next part we're going to be adjusting all these rollers here so there's a pack of rollers here here and there's rollers here and all of them need to be adjusted which honestly i don't even know how they do a test print if all this is that loose but that makes me believe that maybe that test print is not even from this machine right, so we're getting somewhere here all right so we finally got everything adjusted and everything is perfect now except for the belt i haven't adjusted the belt yet we'll get to that in a second but all the rollers are really nice and again the way i check them is i roll them if they all roll with a little bit of resistance so if they're too tight and they're not rolling then you might be a little bit over tight so all right so let's flip this thing around again so it looks like we need to tighten our belt because it's very very loose here so and the way we do that is there's two bolts under here and they're sitting on t-nuts so we're just going to loosen those and now we can pull the tension on the belt here all right now we have a pretty tight belt and everything seems to be aligned and moving very smooth so the Y belt is actually quite loose also I mean it might be okay but I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit so there's also two little bolts here with T nuts on the other side and same way this bracket this whole front bracket you can pull on it oh yeah that's definitely better so yeah guys you definitely need to know what's going on a little bit for this printer all right so I think we pretty much took care of all of our axes here so the bed is running really smooth this is running smooth and the z-axis should be running pretty smooth also so I'm just pulling on the belt on the top and we have all our ribbon cables connected and I think we have all the rest of our cables good to go so I'm gonna lower this thing again to make sure that we are landing right here on our z-axis switch pretty well so we're really close I'm just gonna go ahead and run the bed down a little bit to be on the safe side that way when we first power on the printer that'll guarantee us that we won't hit the bed so we did step four the Z axis switch, we did the motor plugging in. So we connected the X carriage ribbon cable and then we plugged in that cable there on the bottom and the rest of those on the uh, left side there. And we connected the ribbon cable on the gantry and also we adjusted all of our wheels. So yeah, I think we completed the whole installation. So before we power it on and do our first print, let's go ahead and take a closer look at all the features that this printer has because it has quite a few of them. And also guys, it looks like that the extra belts here are extra just in case. So this looks like the X axis belt here, just in case it gets ruined, you got an extra one. Or should I say not belt, but the ribbon cable. And uh, this is the one on the bottom over there, I'm guessing, because that's definitely vulnerable to damage. So they give you another one of those. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's take a closer look at this Artillery Sidewinder X1. So it's a very large printer. If you guys can see it, it's in there on the table. You can judge it by that little plant behind there. But it's definitely huge. And it's a 300 by 300 by 400. So very tall. And not only that, we have a spool holder up there. So let's go ahead and start with this spool holder. So this is how it sits. And it has bearings. Rolls very easily here. And we do have our filament detection right here. So if we come around on this side, we can see that we have dual Z rods there. And not only that, we have a belt that connects them here on the top with pulleys. So that's quite unique. So if one spins, the other one spins with it. And so they both always travel the same distance, which I think is quite important to keep you know this level so as we come down here we can see this is the bushings here for the z rods and they're quite unique and the unique part about them is that they kind of just you can see that the bushing is not actually connected to anything so and these are 3d printed and there's like a little spacer in there too so the cool part about this is that you'll never have z rod binding because your rod here and the bushing is quite free and it's never forced so it always could you know move around in there so that seems like a pretty interesting way to go and maybe the best way to be honest because Z-Rod binding does happen and you know that's what gives you those weird layers in the print. 
And so this is what the couplers are here on both ends. They're the flexible ones. And then our motors here. And so one of the things that really stand out about this printer is these really thick channels here. This is a very large channel. I guess it's a 20 by 80 maybe or I'm not sure exactly what they are, but they're huge. So quite unique for sure. And the X axis has it in the Y here, which looks really, really tough. And I know the bed will be very stable on this thing also. So, so that's a huge plus for this printer right here. So let's go ahead and take a look on this side here. So it looks like here we have the X axis motor that drives this belt, moves the hot end assembly. And there's a little circuit board here, or not a circuit board, I guess a junction board. And this is where all the cables are kind of routed. So you got the main cable coming in here from the bottom and around to here. And then they've got another cable coming out of it and going to the hot end. And then here we also have the X axis switch and then the X axis motor. And there's a little jumper here. The cable management on this printer is just awesome. It almost feels like it doesn't have cables. And so here is our hot end. And this is, you know, something that I've never seen before because I'm kind of new to 3D printing. But it looks like it has quite an interesting extruder. So it is a direct drive. So we have everything in one here. So our motor is actually inside that cover. And that's where our ribbon cable also plugs in. And all the wiring separates from there. But it looks like it's a geared, some sort of geared extruder here. I think the Solway SW36 had something similar to this, but it was all encased. So here's our heat brake fan, looks like. And this is our blower fan for the part cooling. And underneath here, we can see our heater block. I'm not sure exactly what kind that is, but we have little wires here sticking out. And also, guys, if you could see that, there's that LED light right there. So the one that came in the pouch was actually an extra one. Interesting. So the duct is 3D printed. It looks like it kind of just blows down right here so hopefully it'll do a pretty good job in cooling and so here's another angle from the other side so the good thing about direct drives or at least what i hear is that you know you can print flexible filaments with ease because you're pushing filament right next to the hot end or right at it i guess so you're never going to have a bind and also guys this fan looks a little bit larger than what i normally see so so that's quite nice and hopefully that's what we need to get that good airflow going all right so let's look at the bed here so the bed is glass but it has a coating see if i can zoom in here guys for you hopefully there you can kind of see that it's perforated it's got like little dimples in it and i'm guessing that's for releasing the print so when it heats up it should stick good and then when it cools down it should just pop off so that's the whole idea i think behind this type of bed and because this glass it should be quite flat so i'm going to go ahead and remove this sticker here because i don't think that needs to be there and so as i was removing the sticker i noticed this here so artillery is changing their name to even nova so i'm guessing because of the issues that they have probably with shipping and things like that people think it's offensive the artillery name but i don't know why it's actually quite a cool name and we can see it here right here so hopefully that won't hurt them too much changing names because that usually you know results in a little bit of confusion so we are in the bottom and the back and we can see there there's our y axis switch and then our motor right there running on this very nice extrusion here and there's our tensioner and the belt being right here so to the left of the printer we have the screen let's go ahead and pull this off and it's quite a nice screen kind of pops out a bit so here we have a usb connection and a micro usb so they do give you two options here but they did include the usb flash drive for this so that's quite nice i definitely like that and if we keep going on this side we can see that there's a little fan here well actually it's not a fan it's just a vent hole and the rest of it's quite clean and you can see the low profile of this thing and it looks quite attractive and we already talked about the bed a bit it is an ac bed with, with insulation and we also get really nice little knobs over there on the bottom all right and so if we go to the right side of the printer looks like here we have some venting holes and we have the usb printer plug here to the computer all right so that's about it over here and if we keep going we come to the back and here we can see we have a switch and it looks like we're also fused and this is where our cable will go in this is where the wiring comes out for the heated bed here we can see a sticker that says warranty basically it says warning warranty void if seal broken and this is one of the reasons why i haven't popped it back open yet to show you guys the inside because i want to make sure this thing works all good before i do that so on this printer we're going to look at the electronics of it on the update video and if we keep going here we can see the manufacturing sticker and all the specs of this printer all right guys and i think that's pretty much it for the printer so let's go ahead and plug it in the back let's hit the power button and we'll see what happens 
Very nice logo there. Wow, beautiful screen. All right, so the printer is on and it's actually quite quiet. Wow, guys, I really love the touch screen there. It's got a black background. They definitely did the right thing there. All right, so this is how it starts up and it looks like we have our hot end temperature, our bed temperature, and then our fan speed there. So we got tools, set, and print. I guess let's go through the menu right quick so we can see what's on here. Click on tools here. So we have heat, extrude, move, home, level, change, and then more. All right, if I click heat, so here we can heat things up, extrude. Wow, these are beautiful menus. And the touch screen is really easy to use. So here we have home. I think if I click that, it's probably gonna go home. Well, let's skip that for now. So here we can level the bed every point. Very cool. Change filament and more here. Oh, and this is where we can turn on our light. I guess let's try that. Okay, so it actually worked. So I, I pushed white. Okay, so the black one is off, white is on. Then we got red, and green, and blue. Pretty cool. I guess I'll leave it on white. So that is quite unique that it has a light. All right, so I guess that's everything. So the more is the light. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and click home. Okay, so there's a menu inside the menu of the home. So you can home all these axes. I guess we can do them one at a time. So let's go ahead and do the ones that should work because they were connected from the factory. So we got X here. Let's go with X. Okay, that's good. Let's go to Y. It moves quite fast. And now let's go for our Z, but I'm going to go to the back and get ready to turn it off. So let's do it. Okay, it's moving really fast. Okay, it worked. And we can see there our nozzle is just right. So yeah, if you butt this thing against the frame when you install it, the Z-axis switch, then there shouldn't be an issue at all. All right, so everything is working. Awesome. All right, so for the next part, let's do some bed leveling. So we'll start with first. Wow, it's so fast. It seems to be maybe moving too fast. Okay, so we've landed on the first mark there and we're really close to the bed, but not there yet. But I did compress these knobs quite a bit, so we can definitely back off of them. So I like to use posty notes because they're quite thin and it gives me pretty accurate results. I'm just gonna loosen that. And by the way, guys, if you're like way off, you might have to adjust your end switch there. And by the way, I just noticed that the end switches actually glow when they hit it, indicating the uh, stop. All right, guys, so I'm just going to go around and adjust it a few times because you definitely want to do it a few times when it's this off. You know, once you adjust one side, the other side goes off. So, all right, so I got the bed leveled and I think it's all good. Let's go ahead and preheat this thing and see, make sure our bed and hot end get hot. So it looks like here we have like a multi choosing screen. So here, if we click on this, it goes from bed to extruder. Here we can choose the temperatures that it changes at. And then here is close. I guess that means stop everything and then this is back so there is looks like maybe no hot buttons but let's see what happens so if we click plus okay yeah there's no hot buttons the touchscreen is so good that technically you don't really need it and now we can go to the bed okay we don't need that much on the bed let's just go to 60 and that's it if we go back we have the main screen here that'll show us the status of everything all right so i just stepped away for a second and seconds later i came back it was all preheated so it does preheat very quick so let's go ahead and put our filament in so here on the detector you can see that there's a light that glows showing that there's filament and so the way the filament goes is straight down the direct drive there and there's a little hole right here and then there's a little push part here where you feed it in all right i try to stick it in there so let's see if that does it let's go to tools change filament now let's go in. Click confirm to start. All right. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. So it's loading the filament. And it looks like it's going to be pushing out the old filament there. Okay, so it's kind of like outer purges. And then it says load element complete. Confirm. So it looks like we're loaded and ready to print. But before we do that, and so I don't forget, let's check out what the settings is. Okay, so here you can choose between what you want to read, the micro SD or the USB. Let's see what this is. So this is information about the printer. It looks like maybe Wi-Fi. Very interesting. I didn't know it had Wi-Fi. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. Okay, so here's the fan speed. So you here you can individually control the fan speed. Here we have the version and the model number. If you lose power and you need to continue, 
that's where you would do that. I'm not sure exactly. Okay, so this is motor off. If you want to release the separate motors, that's where you would click here. So you got to go in the settings and click that. So All right, so let's go ahead and insert this USB drive. Should be as simple as plugging it in. Let's see which way, this way. There we go. It's quite a nice little USB stick there and it does glow on the top. All right, so let's push print. So here it looks like we only have a couple things to choose from and we have a cube. So let's go ahead and print that and see what happens. Confirm. We'll check out these options in a second. Let's see how it starts printing. All right, so it looks like it started. Okay, it moves really fast. Okay, it's got to get the hot end. Man, it's going super hot. It's got 80 on the bed and 230 on the filament. Very interesting. Wow, that's super fast. It's freaky fast. Okay, so we have a little blob on the tip, but it's going for it. Okay, it's on the blob. All right, so I guess I'll just annihilate it into the print. So it looks like it's getting a really good start there. I don't know if that light from the top is helping or making things worse. It does look quite nice though. And that's the first layer. And it's ultra quiet guys. I can't even hear it almost. I can hear the fans, but I can't hear the motors. And we can see the gear there is turning quite quick. Very cool. Okay, so I just heard that fan come on. All right, so it looks like we're about 11% done. Let's check out some of the options we have here. So we have a pause, a stop. We can change the heat here. We can change filament. So if you're printing and you want to change filament, you can do that. We have more, so we can change. Okay, we can turn on and off the light here. Speed and fan. So all your basic controls here. And here it says, you know, what we're printing, the amount that's done, the time that it took so far since start, and then where the Z axis is, how high it is, our temperature of the extruder, the bed, and the fan. And there's actually a little animation for the fan. So even though the setup was a little bit cumbersome, you know, adjusting all those things, the experience so far of running it is quite awesome. Very intuitive and very easy to use. So yeah, it looks like we're about halfway done with that cube. We'll check out the quality of it here in a little bit. So that took 27 minutes and 42 seconds to do. And this is what it turned out. Very nice. That's actually quite impressive. It looks really good. So I just kind of pried it and now it just pops right off. Wow, check out that bottom. Beautiful. So let's take a closer look at this thing. I'm going to go ahead and try to pop this brim off. We're probably not going to do a great job with this. Yeah, it looks like there's still one layer on there. But in any case, let's look at the walls here. Check out that wall, guys. That's beautiful. The layers are very uniform. Quite impressive, actually. I'm actually pretty confident about printing something more detailed. So I'm going to go ahead and start a benchy just so we can kind of see what we're looking. So I sliced the benchy in Cura for CR10 profile, which I don't even have a CR10, but I just used the standard profile. Now let's see how that turns out out of curiosity and we're just gonna leave the same red filament in there and I got it printing at 0.12 layer height so it should be quite detailed and I think the speed was 45 millimeters a second alright so now it's moving slow because it's using the CR10 profile alright so we'll see how this benchy comes out hopefully pretty good hopefully I got my level there pretty well this is a pretty fine detailed print so maybe a little bit off on the leveling but not close enough to the bed hopefully it turns out all right we'll see so I'm gonna go ahead and do a time lapse of this thing and hopefully it turns out so the print is looking quite good so far can't wait to see what this bench it turns out to be like but so far it looks like it's going to be quite good all right so it's done two hours and 38 minutes not too bad and just by looking at it though it looks pretty amazing Let's see if it'll pop off. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so maybe that's a little bit easier than I was hoping for, but that was perfect, actually. And check out that super good bottom. Wow, that's beautiful. All right, so let's see how this thing came out. So just by looking at it, it looks really, really good. So if we look at the reflection right there, look how beautiful that is. That's excellent. 
Man, they really have this printer nicely tuned. There's almost no layering and and look at that overhanging over here. And the front's quite good too. I don't know guys, I'm kind of impressed with this thing to be honest. So there is a little bit something funny on this side. And we don't really have any weird lines in the walls either, so... I have a feeling that TL smoothers are probably not necessary for this printer. Honestly, if I was getting prints like this out of this printer, I don't think I would ever do anything to it. That's pretty much perfect. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. So I guess I'm going to print some more stuff. So it looks like the CR10 profile is working quite well. Retraction is very good too, you can see. There's practically nothing. I just broke off that little piece that was there. But I like how the bottom looks also. It's got those little dimples in the print. So I'm going to print a few more things and we'll see how this printer does overall. Alright, so I printed a few more things as you can see here. And let me just tell you guys that this printer has been a great experience so far. I think it's becoming my favorite printer quite quickly here. And the reason I'm saying that is because it's quite enjoyable to use. It heats up really quick and then when it's running it's ultra quiet like you almost can't hear that it's doing anything you can just hear the fans a bit and that's it i guess the user experience at least for me has just been excellent so far but with that said let's check out what we printed here so this is a boat and you can see guys that it didn't finish so this filament here this blue filament it actually gives me a lot of trouble so I'm thinking that's what happened here because I had a clog and this is not the first time I have a clog with this filament so it's almost running out so I can't wait to get rid of it but you can see that you know it kind of had a clog right here and then after that it did okay sort of you know then it started to really go bad after that and then it just clogged I think this was like a really cheap filament I got for like 12 bucks or something on Amazon it does print nice it just has problems I think it's inconsistent maybe of thicknesses or maybe it has particles inside it's dirty or something but in any case but if you look at this print you can see how excellent it is so I'm really impressed with this printer I mean it's not the best I've ever seen but it's pretty darn close to the best that I have out of all my printers and we are talking about a large bed here so so thankfully we were still able to print some details here you guys can see a little bit hopefully it's quite good like i said earlier if it keeps printing like this i don't think it needs any upgrades this is perfect and the overhangs all have been very good like there's no real issue with overhangs and you can see even like these delicate pieces here it did pretty well also and there's two in the back there so overall, I was very impressed when it printed this boat here. So after that, I got a little excited. I thought, I want to print something a little bit bigger. So I printed this frog here. This is a green frog. And he's quite large, you can see him in my hand. And he turned out awesome. So if we look at him closer. Now this filament is really weird. It's also a very cheap filament. And it has color shifts. Like it looks darker and brighter in certain layers. But if we keep track of the reflection, you can see it's flawless. The print is flawless, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, you can see how smooth it is. Ultra smooth. And look at our overhangs. I mean, that's a pretty mean angle here. So, especially starting out right here. So, the cooling on this machine is excellent. So, this turned out really well. And one of the things that impresses me the most is the bottoms. And I love that look, too kind of got a little bit of a shine and little dimples look very nice so I was very impressed with this frog and so after the frog I wanted to print something much larger so I decided to do a vase in spiralized mode you can see that it turned out really well so this is 250 millimeters tall so this is going quite tall and it's just a single layer because it's spiralized and if you can see maybe there's some warping right here so the vase warped and when it did warp it had a little bit of funny lines I guess because of the warpage but in the places where it wasn't warping it looks flawless and here on the neck also you can see how nice that is so quite impressive on the size that this thing can print and so the more I use it the more I look at it and the more I realize that this printer is quite a value because you really get a lot of interesting things here so not only do we have dual axes lead rods going up but we also have a belt on top that connects them so I think that's a great feature and having this really large channel here for the X and the Y axes is a huge plus also 
The glass bed is definitely something to get used to, those little dimples there. So if you ever have like power outage or you know you run out of filament, the only danger to that is when it does cool down, you know, your print is vulnerable to just pop right off and you can't really resume. So that's the only negative I really see. But other than that, the bed has been pretty nice to use. It seems to stick just fine once it's heated and then when it cools, it just pops right off. So I guess it's kind of a double edged sword of what it is, but there is options where you can get something on top of this and you could stick just fine to that. So, but I definitely love the part that the bed is AC. So it heats up real quick. Like you don't really have to wait long from complete cool to start printing a couple minutes or less. It's quite amazing. And this whole direct drive extruder here that's completely integrated into the hot end is quite interesting and quite unique looking too. I really like how they got everything organized so well and the ribbon cables and just it's just a pleasant machine to look at. And the touchscreen is the best I've used so far. It's extremely responsive. I mean as fast as you can tap is as fast as it changes. Excellent touchscreen. Anyways guys, I think you can tell already that I absolutely love this machine and I think this is probably one of the better buys if you're going to get up to that, you know, four or $500 range. You really do get a quality machine. So if you're interested in this thing, I'm going to leave some links in the description. Check those out. And if you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button. If you like videos like this and you want to see more and you're not subscribed to this channel, then hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of 3D printing reviews and a lot more stuff to come. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.